Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial video. Today we're talking about skins and custom skins specifically and how you can add them to your project. So what we have here in this example is we have a skin. I just have the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, Freddy model here um, just for example. Um, and you'll notice there's quite a bit going on in here. So let's quickly run through uh, what's inside my custom skins folder. So the big thing to keep in mind when making custom skins is that you do need to have a model that's rigged. We can go over that example in the future because I just want to show you how to actually use the custom player skin as well as if you already have existing uh, models that you want to use. And in fact, if you do want to have a custom skin, you can actually go into the plugins folder into the custom map tools content and then under the mannequin and character and mesh uh, you'll actually have a default example of the unreal engine 4 i believe's mannequin this is a good example of a pre-rigged character for pavlov that you can immediately make into a skin all you'd have to do is go into the character and you want to migrate it and then it will grab the meshes, the textures, the material layers, etc., as well as the meshes itself. And you can um, redirect that to your UGC folder under another custom skins folder if you wanted to. In fact, let's go ahead and do that as well so that we have it as an example. So we're going to do that. We're going to grab character. We're going to migrate this, and it should just be this. You don't want it to migrate more than that. If it is, you know, double check you're doing it right. Um, we are under the this UGC. I'm going to go into the custom skins. Actually, you can't do that. You have to put it under a content folder. So every UGC has this content folder. For example, if I were to go here and select this folder, it's going to give me an error saying that it needs to be under a content folder. So we just go back one and select this. Now we're going to let that migrate. It should take just like a second. We're going to go back to our UGC. And you'll notice now we have this mannequin character mesh, all that stuff. Now I'm going to move this into my custom skins just so for organization's sake. Uh, that's just how I do it. You can do it however you want. And now there we go. Now we have two skins. So the first thing to do is if you already have your pre rig skin, um, I would, again, I would put it in a folder just for organization's sakes. But what we're going to do is we're going to right click in this folder and we're going to type table into here so we're gonna just go to data table and we're gonna choose a let's see we're going to choose player skin there it is under the row structure I'm gonna hit okay and we can rename this to whatever we want I'm just gonna call it tutorial skin table great we're gonna go ahead and open it up I'll switch to the other screen and we're gonna click the add button and what this is going to do is going to create a new entry. And this is the really important part. You need to make sure that you rename this first row name because this is what you're going to use in the engine in order to find your skin. So make it something memorable. I'm just going to call this the UE4 man, I guess. <laughs> now, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we need to select the skeletal mesh. And I think it's important to discuss what a skeletal mesh is versus a static mesh. So let's go back to our first screen and let's kind of look at an example. So under this custom skin that I got here, I actually went ahead and exported a pose as a static mesh. And a static mesh is basically exactly as it is. It's a mesh that isn't rigged to move and do animation. Whereas a skeletal mesh is just that. It's a mesh, a skeleton, that is designed to do animations. And if you don't know much about game design, one of the big things about walk cycles and stuff that moves is that it's part of an animation sequence and you want to be able to move those things. So when we see our characters moving in Pavlov, those are all skeletal meshes and they need to be rigged to do animation. So that's kind of really the basic bare bones difference. Back up to the, to the skin table. We're going to select the UE4 man and we're going to uh, choose a player mesh. And from here, I'm going to find SK mannequin and I want to make sure it's the correct one. Obviously, you can look at the path underneath 
uh, a highlighted one because you'll see I have like four of these, five of these, and you'll notice that they all have different paths. It's important to make sure that it's the right UGC folder, otherwise it's not gonna appear. And I know that mine ends in 081, so that's what I'm going to do. And when I select it, there we go, we just added a skin. And similarly, you can add hands as well, such as bare hands, NATO gloves, Russian gloves, or custom. And custom gloves are a little bit strange, but we'll quickly go over that as well today. So let's just put it for custom for now. Next, we're gonna add another skin because we have two. We're gonna rename this one. I'm gonna call this Fred. <laughs> And I'm just gonna make this NATO gloves, I guess. <laughs> All right, we're gonna save it. And now we're gonna go back. We're gonna go to our global info. And you'll notice right away on the class defaults, if you don't see this screen, you can just click this little button up here, class defaults to see it. You'll notice that we have this player skin table now. And here is where you're gonna select your skin table. And boom, there we go. Now we have custom skins added. You can also manually add skins by going from event play in your global info, going into an execution pin, uh, add skin to list, and you can give it a name and you can break the player skin to, or you can make a player skin and then you could select the actual mesh and the type of hands that you have if you wanted to. Uh, I like the player skin table better personally just because it's a lot faster so that's what I use but if you want to manually add stuff you certainly can do that too and add it here if we had our skin boxes which I believe they're actually these white ones from a previous tutorial you'll remember that we had a variable that we can change that's just a I think it's a text that we yeah so we have a text that we can change now this is where that player table and those memorable names are really important. So if we reopen our table, you see that the names that we have, and I'll expand these, are UE4man and Fred. So those are the names that you're going to want to put in to that skin box, exactly how you put them before. So make sure they're not too complicated. So if we go back to here, we can change this from Farmer to Fred. And this one from clown to UE4 man. And that's pretty much it. And there we go. That's all we had to do to basically add a custom skin. Again, this isn't for rigging it. This is just adding a custom skin. We'll probably go over a Blender tutorial on how to make a skin. I use something called Auto Rig Pro. It does cost money, so keep that in mind. But Blender is really kind of where you make all your models and such. So. Just keep that in mind. Let's talk about custom hands. That one thing that we had in the skin table from earlier. Now, that's actually where your player proxy is going to be really, really useful. So let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go into here. And if we go into functions, we actually have this option. Let's see, get custom hand. And we're going to click on that. And it's gonna bring us to a whole nother function. And the way this one works is that you have your skin name. You're gonna to have to do some, some node stuff for this, but, and we're gonna break this cause this is gonna be a little confusing, but let's break this. So let's say that we have, we're gonna use something called a switch statement to do this. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. This is just how I've done it, but I'm gonna take this text and I'm gonna put it into a switch on name, okay? And a switch statement, if you don't know, is basically these outputs, these execution pins, are based off of what the input is called. And the input in this case is going to be the skin name. So let me get rid of one of these. So we had two skins. We had Fred and we had UE4Man. Now, bear in mind that I did not tag, I believe I didn't tag fred to have <clears throat> custom skin i think i just gave it a nato glove and that's important if you don't have your player skin table properly set up so you see how i have custom down here if you have anything other than custom that function is not going to do anything so let's go ahead and make it custom and from here you can change how execution works so obviously all of them are going to eventually go into this return node the only thing that's going to change is our return value the specific asset 
Now I have a couple of hands that I created that are different uh, throughout some of the other maps I've made, but essentially you're going to have another skeletal mesh and depending on which branch you go through, you're going to change this return value to be that skeletal mesh, if that makes any sense. I don't really recommend using this as there are far better ways to go about creating custom hands and vests and such. Um, but we're not going to be going over that in this tutorial. This is just a basic if you want to switch the hands to a different model. That's just something I would recommend looking at. So I'm just going to take this and move it back over. But something to just keep in mind in the future. If you are wondering, if you have custom set and you have no hand selected by default, um, or you don't have any mesh selected for it in that function, it's just going to auto default to the bare hands model. So you won't have to worry too much about it creating anything game breaking. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create custom skins for players. Now, the big thing to keep in mind with these, and I'll mention it here and in the blender video when I get around to making that size on these models does matter. Uh, because if it's not scaled properly, you're going to have issues where the characters are going to be super massive, but it's not actually going to register it properly, or you'll have them super tiny and that's not going to work out the way you want it to. Unless, unless that's the intended function of your game mode, then I guess that works, but I wouldn't recommend doing that personally. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope this was a useful tip.